The latest documents on the Labour politicians' financial corruption are now exposing the shadow chancellor Rachel Reeves' lack of credibility when it comes to finances. Welcome back to another episode of the Labour Files, the documents that are exposing the uh, Labour Party's financial corruption because the mainstream media are focusing on the Tory corruptions and we've already covered all that with Rishi Sunak and his uh, cabinet of nutters. But let's also be objective. Because the mainstream media are not focusing on the Labour Party and the Labour politicians, we have to do it ourselves. That's the job of the independent media and especially thanks to the boys at Guido who have been doing the digging. So... This is about Rachel Reeves, the shadow chancellor of the Labour Party, who's going to be potentially our next chancellor of the Exchequer in the country. We've discovered that the expense files that have been exposed about her party is now actually showing that her official credit card was actually suspended. She's so bad with finances that the card was officially suspended. So Guido said... Given that Rachel Reeves will be handling the public purse if Labour win the next election, you would hope that she's at least responsible enough with her own finances to manage her MP's expenses card. Well, not so much. In 2015, Rachel Reeves was one of the 19 MPs to have her official credit card suspended by IPSA after racking up over £4,000 in invalid expense spending, the third highest sum of all the 19 listed. According to The Guardian, she uh, cleared her outstanding debt soon afterwards and Guido has contacted Rachel Reeves' office for an explanation. Radio silence so far. A couple of issues. I love how there were 19 MPs who had their cards suspended and... We didn't hear anything about it in the mainstream media. So well done, guys. Secondly, that the over like the four thousand pounds in valid spending. That's just one part of it. Because all the other scandals that we've actually been exposing and talking to you guys about were those who were valid spending. Anything from racial, you know, Angela Rayner's uh, AirPods and, and, and iPads and everything else like that, to all the other spendings going to Pret and other expensive coffee shops uh, on taxpayer instead of using their own money those were the valid ones and these are the invalid ones so there's much more to it as we know so when it comes to rachel reeves uh, they are trying to portray a new image for the labor party they're calling it new labor oh i think we've heard that before but new labor is now back so well it's new new labor basically but independent and all the left-wing outlets left-wing press and journalists are obsessed with these guys saying, well, the Labour Party is now seen as the party of business. Rightly so. Oh, dear God, I'm so proud of you. So, <laughs> I don't know why I got so camp here. But business. No, the Labour Party is now the party of big corporations. That's what it is. It's not business. We're not talking about free market, small businesses and medium-sized businesses, actual competition. No, they are in favour of state corporatism. Big money. Big business, big government, like in China. We actually saw her literally weeks ago with Keir Starmer going to Davos. They were proud publicly to go to Davos, to go to the latest World Economic Forum conference, um, to hang out with all the other billionaires and all the other uh, powerful people. Weirdly enough, this was the, the, the one Davos conference because of public pressure. And we have been talking a lot about WF and their role when it comes to influencing public policy. Presidents and Prime Ministers did not go to Davos, apart from one. And that was Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany. He was the only leader in Davos. All the other world leaders sent representatives. Some of them sent gimmicky people. Some of them sent actual real, real represent representatives, like Joe Biden. Uh, but here we sent Grant Chaps, who was the real representative. But then Rishi Sunak, in order to throw Kemi Badenoch under the bus, and he, he knew that if he sent her... Then, of course, um, there will be a lot of people on the conservative side who won't be happy about it. Uh, but she she went to Davos, Kemi, but she didn't do anything. She was just there. But Grant Shapps is very proactive. Grant Shapps is hanging out with Bill Gates and all the other best friends uh, talking about the uh, turning the whole world into net zero. Um, but Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves created this image of 
we are now the serious Labour Party and we are sending our leader, Keir Starmer, and our Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, to Davos. If uh, Rishi Sunak is not going, we'll be going on the international stage. But where are you going? There are no world leaders in Davos this year. I don't know why they were, <laughs> what they were doing over there. But, the, again, speaking of the left-wing press and media, The Guardian are also obsessed. They've been promoting all the nonsensical stuff coming out of their mouths. Labour's Rachel Reeves is aiming to be Britain's first green chancellor. Britain's first green chancellor. Firstly, why not just join the Green Party? Secondly, you're not the first green chancellor. We've had so many green chancellors already. Literally every single chancellor. Jeremy Hunt, you had Philip Hammond, you had so many. Well, Richard Sunak, he was chancellor. They were all going with the green agenda. So they don't pretend to be that special. I am the first green chancellor of the country. <laughs> also, you're not chancellor yet. So don't get too excited about the prospects of a Labour majority. But we are where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.